Hi, I'm Candace Sorensen. Chuck Offenberger is a Shenandoah native and also an accomplished writer. He recently spoke at the annual Chamber Dinner and had some interesting life stories to share. So anyway, I've been wearing these black and white saddle shoes since I was in sixth grade. My brother Tom came home from Iowa U and said all the cool guys at Iowa U were wearing them. And so, oh man, I wanted black and white saddle shoes. Started wearing them then, been wearing them ever since. Always pretty sure they're gonna come back into style at any minute. <laughs> and they have frittered up close a couple times. Like when I was in college at Vanderbilt, the cheerleaders were wearing them. And then uh, other times they've gotten kind of hot. Well, 1994, I was wearing a pair that were really old. They were so old that in August that summer, I put them on and my right big toe poked through the upper part of the shoe, the toe part. That's how thin they were. So I was headed to Northeast Iowa on a story and I drove through Conrad, Iowa. Ever been to Conrad? Black dirt capital of the world. Great slogan. Better, much better slogan than we have in Cooper, which in Cooper it's Everything's super in Cooper. <laughs> On my way to Northeast Iowa, I stopped in Conrad, Iowa, because that's the home of Linda Hart, the country cobbler. And I ran in there. She'd been doing my shoe work for a number of years. When you, run, when you travel the state like I've done for so long, you do a little business here and there all over the state. So Linda's been my cobbler. So I go in there and put my saddle shoes on the counter. I said, Linda, I gotta go to decor and back. Can I come back through later? And could you just put a little patch on that hole right there? And she looked at him and she says, I'm not fixing those one more time. And I said, What do you mean? She says, I've resold them twice. And I said, Well, what do I do? And she said, Well, for crying out loud, get some new ones. So I go get back to Des Moines and I go into Yonkers and said, I want a pair of Bass black and white saddle shoes, G.H. Bass Shoe Company. Those are the brand I always wore. I want a pair of Bass black and white saddle shoes. Nope, didn't have them. Went out to Brandeis out west in Des Moines. They didn't have them. I'm heading north again on I-35 and I go by Story City, Iowa, where there's this, um, what do they call that? VF Factory Outlet Mall and there's a Bass store. So I go running in there and I walk into the clerk and I said, Yes, sir, I'd like a pair of black and white uh, bass saddle shoes. And this fellow said, well, we don't have them. And I said, you know, maybe I bought these out of a catalog. You got a catalog? And he said, yeah. So I looked through and there's none. But I did find an 800 number, the customer service hotline for GH Bass Shoe Company in South Portland, Maine. So a couple days later, I dialed it up and get this nice woman, Lin <coughs> Linda Wood, on the phone. And I said, ma'am, I want to order a pair of men's size 10 and a half black and white saddle shoes. And she said, we don't have them. And I said, you don't have them? Why not? She said, no, we don't make them anymore. And I said, why don't you make them anymore? And she said, well, there's been no demand. <laughs> and I said, well, there is in Iowa. <laughs> and she said, you know, we hadn't noticed. And I said, well, let me, I told her the whole sad story, sixth grade in Shenandoah and all this, and my big brother, and how I, I said, I know this will cost me an arm and a leg, but will you special make me a pair? I'll pay for them, just have a special pair made for me, and I'll pay it. And she said, Mr. Offenberger, right? I said, yeah, and she said, no offense, sir, but... This is the G.H. Bass Shoe Company. We're the largest retail shoe company in the world. We don't special make a pair of shoes for anybody. <laughs> and I said, well, Linda, what if I could get my friends out here in Iowa to order some with me? I mean, how many would I have to get for, for you to do that? And she said, sir, you don't have that many friends. <laughs> well, it's like waving a red flag in my face. But I was bullheaded enough and I, I, was, I had a column due in about 10 minutes too. So I get off the phone, I'm mad, I got a column due in 10 minutes, that's a dangerous combination. <laughs> and I sat down and I wrote, there are six known adult male wearers of black and white saddle shoes in Iowa. Hell, of course I knew them. And I named them. And I said, I've checked with him and we're all in the same boat. Our shoes are worn out. We can't find any to buy. Here's the deal. 
We know that the rest of you have been looking at us wearing these shoes and thinking how nice we look in them. So here's your chance. Write letters to the Bass Shoe Company, send them here to me at the Des Moines Register, and tell them how you want to buy a pair of those shoes and why you think they should put them back into production. And I said, make the letters, the funnier the better, send them in here to me. So I write that, slap it in the paper, and a couple days later, I had about 30, 35 letters come in. Pretty good response. I wrote, excerpted several of them, put them in another column. Now, of course, that first column, I also faxed it off to South Portland, Maine, Bass Shoe Company. So the second one comes out, I fax it off to Bass Shoes, no answer on that one either. But then I get about 60 or 65 letters coming in to the register on this. One of them came from a school teacher in Atlantic. This is the fall of 1994. She said, Dear Chuck, I've got an idea for you. Clint Eastwood is over in Winterset this fall making that new movie, Bridges of Madison County. I know you must talk to Clint, so uh, if you could get him to put on a pair of those black and white saddle shoes for one scene in that movie, everybody in America would want them. So I wrote in a column, I said, I haven't been talking to Clint much, but you know, here. <laughs> Here's this idea, and I bounced it out there, and I said, hey, same thing, send me your letters, and I, I faxed that column off to South Portland, Maine, and two days later, I got a registered letter from Mitchell, V. Mitchell Massey, Senior Vice President, Retail, G.H. Bass Shoe Company. I had to sign for the letter, and I opened it up, and it said, Dear Mr. Offenberger, you do not need to try to get Clint Eastwood to put on a pair of those shoes. <laughs> We surrender. <laughs> he said, one time only, we are going to make those shoes for you and all your friends out there in Iowa. <laughs> so here's the deal. You get their shoe sizes and you get their checks made out for 65 bucks for men's shoes, 62.50 for women. You package up that order all in one and you send it out here. One time only we're gonna make these, Mr. Offenberger, you better order two pair yourself. <laughs> so we cranked up the back in the saddle campaign, as we called it, and uh, announced this time, well, now's the time for you to all to put your money where my mouth's been, and then the result was amazing. On Halloween day, we sent off the order to Bass Shoes for 675 pairs of black and white saddle shoes <laughs> and checks. And the checks totaled more than $48,000. We sent those in and suddenly it was a new deal at Bass Shoe Company in South Portland, Maine. Don Freeman, then the president of Bass Shoes, got all excited about, he was calling this the Iowa buy, and he said, told his executives, he said, retool this factory, we are making black and white saddle shoes now, and I want them delivered to those people in Iowa so they can wear them to Christmas Eve services. Hot chop, away they went. They started making black and white saddle shoes, and the first 10 pair off the line came, went to their Force, sales force that was going to the New York City Shoe Show, the biggest retail shoe show in the world. They went in there and got orders for 10,000 pairs of black and white saddle shoes. And I wound up on page one of the New York Times fashion section. <laughs> But I'm sure Alan Hall would confirm this. You wear black and white shoes like this, and there's something good about it that might not occur to you otherwise, other than how cool you look, and that is, when I wear these into a room full of people like this, people don't notice my earring near as quick. 